Good evening. This is your host, Dan Stafford, with the Midwestern Geek in Cali podcast slash videocast. Uh, this evening I'm doing video, obviously, and I am videocasting from 42 Tardis Way in lovely Temecula, California, summer's winter home. And you might get tired of hearing that, maybe, but maybe not. All right. Um, you can always visit our blog at www.midwesterngeekandcali.com and you know check out all of our older episodes. Um, also, a lot of our episodes are built into a YouTube playlist. I'm working on getting audio episodes added to that playlist as well. If and also I have uh, quite a large archive of audio episodes that were previously done before I moved to YouTube and those are slowly being restored to the blog at uh, www.midwesterngeekandcali.com. Tonight's episode is about a couple of uh, changes in the tech world, a big one for many, many people that not too many people have heard about yet, is some very big refreshes to Gmail. Gmail is getting some pretty heavy-duty upgrades. Um, one of the interesting ones is uh, what they're calling... Uh, this is from CNET.com. They're calling it uh, self-destructing email. All right. Basically, you're going to be able to set an expiration date on email and Gmail. And by the way, that new Gmail is available now. You can go to your settings in Gmail and you can try out the new Gmail now. It's already available for desktop and um, webmail. So um, in addition to being able to set expiration dates on email, you'll also have options to uh, be able to limit forwarding and quite a few other things as well. Uh, also, there's a new sidebar added where you can add things to your calendar or uh, Google Keep, uh, other uh, applications and extensions that you use in Chrome, you'll be able to uh, access directly from Gmail rather than having to open the, those applications separately. So for instance, you uh, get an email and you need to add something from the email to your calendar, there's a calendar button right on the sidebar on the right in the new Gmail and you can add it from there rather than having to open a separate browser tab for calendar. Which is really nice. And the same thing with Google Keep. Uh, Google Keep is really great for reminders and to-do lists. Uh, it's a, a very simplified and easy to use. So there are also all kinds of new security features built in and that you can also require a SMS text verification before someone can open an email. So if someone's email account is hijacked, it's going to be pretty tough for them to get into, say, a sensitive email because they'll ha also have to have the recipient's mobile phone to be able to verify that they're allowed to read the email. Uh, so I, I just literally uh, five minutes ago switched to the new Gmail format with uh, Midwestern Geek and Cali at gmail.com. So I'm still trying it out. Um, they're also looking at ways to click less um, in order to work with Gmail. I'm still not quite certain how that works because I, I still don't see a preview, plan, uh, preview pane um, to be able to preview messages rather than um, have to open them up. Um, I'm not sure what they're talking about there, so I have to really um, wonder what they mean by that. You know, that's one thing that Gmail has been missing for a long time is a preview pane. 
in order to um, look at messages without leaving the list of messages in your inbox. Um, I missed that feature in Gmail and I wish Google would uh, actually add it. Um, there is also, if you've noticed lately on the mobile version of Gmail on an Android phone, there are single click buttons like um, I'm busy or got it or yes, I can do it and thank you. And these are added by artificial intelligence. Um, based on the content of the message. So the AI suggests several options to use. Well, that's now coming into desktop. Uh, desktop Gmail, sorry. It's late night one for me here. Uh, so there's, there's quite a few new uh, tricks uh, coming and I've got uh, a few different stories on this. I really like some of what they're talking about, but I'm, I'm going to need to learn how to use it, especially the ones where you click less to get uh, to a message and then back to your inbox. I really need to figure out what in the heck are they talking about there. So, I'll be chasing that down and coming back with a little bit more information on that in the future. Now, I have some ideas for improvement in Gmail that I wrote out uh, about a week ago before I knew the story was even coming out, actually. And these are some suggestions for Google to use in Gmail. So Google, uh, okay, Google, you might want to listen to this. All right. Uh, Number one, suggestion one, header flag bits for receipts and orders that cause automatic starring and block deletion of a message. In other words, what I mean by that is, say you purchase something online and you receive a receipt for it in your Gmail inbox. A trusted merchant would be able to flag a bit in the header that says that this is an order of confirmation email, or this is a receipt for an online order. And that would make that email um, where you would have to override a non-delete option. In other words, you're trying to go and clean out old messages in Gmail, which is notoriously difficult in Gmail. And you're trying to clean up some of your 15 gig of Gmail storage, right? But it's hard to not accidentally delete things that you want to keep, such as receipts and order information on things that you've ordered in the past. For instance, this would be one way to really make sure that at least receipts and orders don't get accidentally deleted when someone goes through their once every five or seven years try to clean up my gmail inbox because it's a nightmare um another tool that would be really useful in gmail is a function called delete all from sender except of course receipts and orders where you could actually just pick an email sender actually have a list of email senders that you've received email from and go through the list and sender by sender just delete all emails coming from that sender because a lot of it is like all right old weather notifications old newsletters that are way out of date um the old alerts you know you know there's so many different things that just clutter up your inbox storage um, on all the different tabs where it would be nice if you could just delete all the email from a specific sender. Um, another one would be a manual delete lock. In other words, where you could check something to prevent the deletion of an email during cleanup. 
again, related to everything I just previously mentioned. And then and also the ability to have multiple email addresses point back to the same inbox account where you could tell where they're coming from. But say you wanted to be able to separate work and personal email and you could set up a second Gmail address that would come back to the same inbox, but it would come back to like a work tab. And so you had such and such uh, work email at gmail.com and then you had a personal email at gmail.com. And you'd be able to have the email go into like a personal or work um, related inbox for follow up appropriately. Um, that might be a good thing to have. And then also a Google suggestion box address, either an email address or just a chat box or something where you could send suggestions ex like exactly like this over to Google simply by clicking on the suggestion box, typing in the suggestion and hit and send, where it would actually go through and get reviewed at least by an AI, if not by a human being. And then also where users give Google ideas in the suggestion box, they're publicly credited for the ideas. In other words, so-and-so thought this up and we agreed with them it was a good idea and decided to go ahead and incorporate it. And, you know, that way it encourages people to go ahead and submit suggestions. Although they may not be financially rewarded for it, they'd at least be socially rewarded for it. So, uh, in other words, other people would know that this was so-and-so's idea and they're the one that came up with it and, you know, the original idea. And then, of course, the suggestion box for improvements on, you know, all that kind of thing. So, there's an awful lot yet that Google can do with Gmail. The new stuff that they're they're coming out with, and it came out, I believe, yesterday or today, Um so in order to get into uh, and try the new Gmail, you would go to the um, upper right corner of your Gmail inbox and there's the little gear wheel looking thing that's the settings and click on that and click on try the new Gmail. Now, once you're in the new Gmail, there is also the option to go back to classic Gmail. So you can switch back if you really hate the new one. It's pretty easy. You do exactly the same thing you did to switch to the new one. It's, it's kind of, you could actually switch back and forth if you want it. So, all right. So that's Gmail. And pretty happy with, with that. Um, I think it's going to be fun to play with. Uh, another thing that's coming up, um, as you see, a little bit warm in here, so it's time for me to uh, ditch the flannel. It's getting on towards summer, and it's starting to be a little bit warmer out here. Um, so, next thing up is Ubuntu Linux. They just released the 18.04 uh, long-term stability release, and it's got some major changes. They are dumping the Unity desktop graphic user interface, the GUI, uh, the UI GUI, Unity GUI, is going bye-bye, and they're moving to GNOME. Uh, <laughs> I was, I wondered about that word anyway. Uh, so yeah, they're switching to GNOME desktop in uh, the latest release of Ubuntu, which is interesting. It takes a little bit of getting used to. And one thing I'm not too thrilled about it with is um, I have a nice custom keyboard that's backlit, you know, full-size mechanical USB keyboard, and it has a built-in audio uh, volume knob and 
the new version of Ubuntu doesn't support the volume knob on my keyboard, and the old one did. So now I've got to use a mouse to adjust the volume. And it's a small quibble, but hey, it used to work. Why doesn't it now? You might want to consider working on that one, uh, Ubuntu. But uh, otherwise, I'm so far liking, liking it. I just switched to it this afternoon. Another new thing for me to try that I just switched to today. Um, when the login prompt looks different. Um, one of the other things that's uh, very different is the uh, minimize, maximize, restore, and close window buttons are moved from the far left corner, upper corner of the uh, window that's open, to the far upper right corner, which is much more Windows-like. Um, that's a different, uh, different way of going about it. And uh, there's other differences too. So I've got a couple of articles, one on how to upgrade from 16.04 LTS and another article on what, uh, you know, what to look for in the new release in 18.04 as compared to 16.04. Both articles will be in the show notes. This is going to be episode 47 of Midwestern Geek and Cali. And again, the site is www.midwesterngeekandcali.com. And that's that's a kind of enough for tonight. A uh, little bit of a fun note. You notice I'm wearing the Back to the Future t-shirt here. We went and saw... Uh, at the Temecula Community Theater, they've been doing a series of shows called Legends, and basically they're tribute bands to, uh, that cover classic rock bands. And tonight it was Super Huey, and uh, that's a uh, tribute band to Huey Lewis and the News. And, man, it was fun. And they had a DeLorean out in the courtyard, and... Uh, you know, the band was really, really good. And I had forgotten how many good songs and hits that Huey Lewis and the News actually had in the 80s. They had a lot, you know, and it was all, the band was tight. They were like in the pocket the whole show. Um, it's two segments of show there at the Community Theater in Old Town Temecula. They have a 20 minute intermission. It's a small venue, generally, I want to say around the order of 500 seats, maybe 500 to 700, maybe something in that neighborhood. I don't think it's more than that. Uh, so it's definitely small, intimate venue. Um, there's not a bad seat in the house. And uh, the band was fantastic. They, the only thing I'd really noticed though was they put in a new LED light system in there. You know, the typical uh, incandescent stage lights or whatever they used to be. These new LEDs are so super bright. They like the new LED headlights on these cars. They blind you if they're shining right in your face. I literally at the intermission had to go back to the car and get my sunglasses to watch the rest of the show. So just saying... The bands they're getting down there are great. We've seen one that covered uh, Rod Stewart and the Rolling Stones. It was uh, Stewart and Stones. We've seen one called Fan Halen that covers Van Halen. Um, we've seen, uh, we saw one that covered ABBA, but that's probably the one I like the least out of all of them. Uh, I liked the original ABBA, but they didn't, the, the the gal singers didn't have the vocal harmonies that the two gals in ABBA had. So um, it, it just wasn't quite up to par with the rest of these that we've gone to see. Uh, there was one called Queen Nation that was a Queen tribute band, and they were fantastic. They were really, really good. Um, yeah, there's been several that we've seen there and they've just all been really good. Um, the ABBA was probably the only subpar one that we've seen at, at that venue. And, you know, it, it wasn't horrible. Don't, don't get me wrong, but it was kind of, and the vocals were off because of the lack of harmony 
and then some of the stage effects just didn't work in the hot desert town of Temecula, uh, you know, like wearing wearing the Swedish furs on stage. And, I, you know, anyway, you know, see it, it's fun, but it's not up, up to snuff with the rest of them. But for overall, I, I would give the overall series like a 9.5 out of 10. I, you know, the Legends series of tribute bands that they've been getting there have just been fantastic. We've enjoyed pretty much every one, and we've seen several. Uh, well worth doing. And the the Super Huey, they were fantastic. They were in the pocket. They were all upbeat, high-energy songs, um, you know, classic 80s. It, it was a blast. It really was a blast. And now I'd highly recommend the series to anyone that's considering going. And on that note, I'm going to call it a night because I'm a little tired and I have some more interesting stories that I want to talk about tomorrow night. Um, a few pretty cool ones. Um, definitely a little bit more uh cool tech coming down the road and some interesting space news and a few other things uh, I'll keep under my hat until I get to tomorrow night's show. I still have to read the material for it. And on that note, happy Vulcan fingers to you from the agent of 42. Thank you for listening. And uh, we'll be talking to you again soon. Good night.